All right, so this is the second week of the ASAD model. And here we're gonna be bringing everything together, everything that we've learned. We're gonna bring it together and we're gonna to try to tell the story of the economy in the short run and in the long run. We're gonna bring the aggregate demand curve, the short run aggregate supply curve, the long run aggregate supply curve, and tell the story of the economy. Before I get into it, I wanna ask you a question. What's your favorite book that you've ever read? Whether it be fiction, nonfiction, what is it that you love about that book? I know you're probably sitting over there thinking about what is Dr. A's favorite book. So I'm going to tell you what my favorite book is. My favorite book of all time is The Kite Runner. And the reason I love The Kite Runner is The Kite Runner takes me away from the reality that I'm living, puts me into the book. And Khalid Husseini, the author of The Kite Runner, does an amazing job of telling a story. I could smell the smells in the textbook. I could see the cities. I could understand the characters in the book. The power of storytelling is really important. You're probably thinking, what does this have to do with economics? It has a lot to do with economics. Economics or being a great economist is about your ability to tell the details of the story. There's really two ways to talk about economics. Um, you know, if something changes in the economy, you say we go from point A to point B. That's being a good economist. Being a great economist is telling me why we move from point A to point B. And telling the audience or explaining to the audience what actually happens. What's the psychology of people in this economy? How are markets behaving? Are we in recessions? Are we in expansions? That is being a great economist. And that's what we're gonna to try to do in this chapter. We're gonna start off in what we call equilibrium setting. The economy is going to be uh, happy, stable. There's nothing that is changing in this economy. And just as a reminder, our equilibrium setting looks something like this. We have price on our y-axis and we have real GDP on our x-axis. We know that our aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. We know that our short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. And we know that our long run aggregate supply curve is vertical. The intersection of those three curves is what gives us what we call our long run equilibrium. Here, it's denoted by the point A. I like to label the graph, and usually the way I label it, and I'm sharing this with you because I might default to this as we go on, as 100 on the price level and 10 for our potential GDP. Remember, the output at our long-run aggregate supply curve is called our potential output or capacity output. You could easily rewrite these as P1 for your price level and Y1 for your output. But this economy is in equilibrium. It's a healthy economy. It's not gonna have any reason to change its behavior unless an outside force acts upon this economy. And that's the goal of this entire series of videos is thinking about what can change in the economy and how does the economy respond to it and what happens or how do economic agents behave and how do they get back to long run equilibrium. We are specifically going to look at a type of model where there's no government intervention. The government is not part of this economy in the sense that it's not going to implement policies when we deviate from our long run aggregate supply curve. The economy is going to find its own equilibrium and that's the beauty of this model. The economic agents, when they deviate from their long run aggregate supply curve, will find ways to get this economy back to its, uh, its long run aggregate supply curve. Before I leave today, I wanna to note uh, two areas. So I'm going to highlight the area to the right of our long run aggregate supply curve. And this area is the area that is associated with any output Y that is greater than Y1 meaning that we are producing at a rate higher than our potential output. 
And we know from previous discussion that the unemployment rate here is going to be below U star, meaning that when we're producing above capacity, we're gonna have an unemployment rate that is below our natural rate of unemployment. On the other hand, on the other side of the long run agar supply curve, the area that I am shading in blue here is the area that's associated with output y that is less than y1. So we are producing at a level below our potential output. In that case, our unemployment rate is going to be greater than u star. The red area is an area where we have expansions. The blue area is the area where we have recessions. And that's it. That's the basic of the model for right now. What we're going to do over the next several videos is talk about changes that could happen in the economy. What might cause that change? What happens in the short run? And how does the economy get back to the long run? And that is the beauty of the ASAD model.